Hello again, everybody. The Colonel Bob Sheridan. We're back here at the uh, Spodek Arena in Kettlewitz, Poland. Along with me is Carl King. This man has provided some real entertainment in the boxing world. You all remember the fiasco in July of 96 when he took on Riddick Bowe and was disqualified. We have uh, action of him uh, against Lennox Lewis when he was knocked out in the first round. But here we watch him against Chris Bird. And, and this fight was a uh, unusual fight, too, in that uh, it was a very tough fight for him you know he had the uh, losses to Mike uh, Tyson's where that was actually a no contest but here against Bird he was doing a pretty good job he went on to win a draw in this fight this took place as you recall uh, Carl in April it was actually April 17th of 2004 it was for the IBF championship of the world I actually had him winning this card I thought that this was the best I ever saw the lot of fight at this stage you know why because there were very few if any low blows in the fight he really learned to keep his hands up, and he's landing the heavier blows, but Chris, as slick as he is, and I love Chris Bard. He's a great fighter. I know the whole family, his sister Tracy, his wife Tracy, his whole family, a wonderful kid, but I didn't think this was Chris's night. Look at Galati here. Kyle, you tell me what you think. Uh, no, he was in fine shape, and, and there was some technical errors in that fight with Bird that particular night, but he, he, he would bend over, and his hands would touch the canvas, and technically, you have to dust those off, those are knocked down, so to speak, and, and, and it was a very, very close fight. A lot of people did indeed think Galata won that fight, but he, he, this was Andrew Galata's second opportunity at a world title, and he came to fight that night, and surprisingly, it ended in a draw. There's been some bizarre things said about this kid. You know, he came late when he fought uh, uh, Lennox Lewis in Atlantic City. Some people said that they were out with him till 3 or 4 o'clock that morning. Those are rumors. I can't confirm that, but he certainly fought like a guy who felt like I did this morning. Yeah, I'll tell you what. He, if that was the case, and here, here he's in with Johnny Ruiz, and uh, this this fight, I definitely this uh, thought that... Well, he was winning this fight. Uh, yeah, you know what? And this was... Uh, uh, until this man, Stoney, who you just saw run across there, ran out, and actually he got thrown out of the corner, and he knocks down Ruiz. I mean, th this was... Uh, that was in November, Colonel, I think, of 2004. Uh, it, was a, it was a fight that I thought was even more uh, winnable for Galata that night than the bird fight. Well, Ruiz just couldn't seem to do anything against him. The size was a difference. Galata was able to knock him down. And, and the whole thing with Stoney, when Ruiz decided to turn it up, and look at that. See, he almost got himself disqualified when he ripped him with a shot in the back of the head. John complaining. And I think the judges might have had sympathy. And, of course, the referee sort of missed that. He's a former fighter himself. Right. Randy, um... <laughs> Very difficult to score his fights. He's grappling and holding, and he's a rugged, rugged guy. About whatever round it was that uh, that Stoney got thrown out, uh, that was the problem. Norman Stone, one of the yeah. real tough guys uh, from Boston, and uh, uses the language, but he's a street kid and the kind of kid I was brought up with. He's a Somerville guy. I was a Dutchester guy. And there's another shot yeah. there, and John goes down, and Randy Newman says, no, he doesn't score that. So a lot of questionable things happen here. And Randy's a real good referee. I'm not, I'm not knocking Randy. I don't ever knock referees because they're in the action. It's easy for us to evaluate. He's got to make a split de decision, a split second decision, rather. And you see there that, look at Ruiz now hitting after the bell. So, I mean, either one of these guys could have been disqualified. But you know what I like about John Ruiz? The guy never had a lot of ability, but he went to the University of Evander Holyfield School of Tough Hard Knocks Fighting, and he really learned. So here at the end of that fight, Galata thought he had a win. And so all kinds of strange things in his career. You know what? That night, I, I personally thought Galata had won, and, and I think I think so did a lot of people. But it's, again, I say it's so difficult to score uh, Johnny Ruiz's fight. All right, here's what we have for you coming up next. It's going to be Andrew Galata and Jeremy Bates. Wherever you're watching around the world, you come right back with us. You don't want to miss Andrew Galata. The new way to be cool, the CarX AC Performance Check. At $29.95, it's a full performance check of your car's AC. And it's the hottest way to be cool. At CarX, where one call does it all. Don't worry, call the CarX man. For complete car care, it's CarX, where our lifetime brakes come with a free oil change. 
Lifetime brakes for $79.95. And that's $79.95 installed, plus a free Carex oil change. Don't worry, call the Carex man. Again, I take full... I gotta run. Yeah, he's thinking Arby's new popcorn chicken. Made with 100% natural, all-white meat chicken. It's so delicious, it'll have you saying, I'm thinking Arby's. Visit Arby's.com for a chance to win a day with a real stuntman. All right, we're all set for our co-feature of the evening. It's big, Andrew Galana. He comes in here with a record of 38-6 from Warsaw in Poland. And he takes on this man, Jeremy the Beast Bates. For Beast, he's one heck of a guy. He comes in here, 21, 13, and 1, 18 knockouts. He knows that he's been brought here as an opponent. He says, you know something? These people don't understand how well-educated I am. I'm here to win this fight. I'm going to upset Galata. He sees this fight as an opportunity of a lifetime, does Jeremy Bates. And, you know, I tell you, I hope he does well because he's a great kid. Wanted to be to mention uh, the guys that he works for and his full-time job that they were nice enough to give him the time off. Let's listen a little bit to our ring announcer, Jacek Laprestovitz. Jacek Laprestovitz. Well, you hear what they think of Golota. They love him here in Poland. He's the villain. If the other guy's a beast, this guy's a villain. One shot. Andrew Bellotta has had a real strange career. The bizarre happening against Lennox Lewis, if in fact that is a true story, that he was out till 4 o'clock in the morning before a fight. The bizarre happenings in Madison Square Garden against Riddick Bowe. And what about the one-rounder with Mike Tyson and no contest? That was unique as well. This guy is a unique man. He may be strange, but God love him. We love strange men in boxing. Oh, Where Jeff. would we be without the characters? <laughs> and he's one of them. Hey, this guy is a, one thing I do know. Andrew Galatis, I could be wrong. If he may be the only guy that fought three consecutive heavyweight uh, title challenges, Carol. Uh, deservingly so. And as we just seen some highlights of two of the three that I mentioned, uh, it's really, this is a fight that uh, can put Andrew Galata back in contention. And at age 39, he's looking for another title shot. Well, for Andrew Galata and his fans, I hope that's so. As you take a look at the tail of the tape, it's going to tell you a few things. As you take a look at Galata, the guy's 6'4", 245 pounds, 39 years of age. He's got height, weight, and reach an advantage, and you might say that the age of 39 is a disadvantage against Jeremy Bates. Jeremy Bates, the educated fella, coming off a series of tough fights. He was stopped by Guillermo Jones in January this year. Prior to that, he was stopped by Evander Holyfield and Ray Austin, both in the second round. So how long can the beast go? He assured me, he said, Colonel, I'm not coming to lay down to this guy. You should take a look at his uh, tail. 33 years of age, the weight a couple of pounds less than the other guy. The age of big factor, he's several years younger. And he's giving up three inches in reach. I mean, it's a David and Goliath situation here. Look at Galata. And Don King, he loves it. King thinks that uh, Andrew Galata can still contest in this heavyweight division, and anybody can. It's wide open. It is certainly wide open, and this is a great opportunity for him. And for once in Jeremy's career, he has the opportunity to prove that he's other than an opponent-type fighter, if he can do it. In reality, he knows where he is. Dorland Key did say this is an opportunity of a lifetime, and we'll see if he takes advantage of this opportunity. Because uh, they're the opportunity will come along too often, Colonel, not in boxing. Well, we'll find out. He's fought big-name opponents. His opponents have had 25 or 30 world title shots between them. So he's been in against some tough guys. His only problem is he's slow to get started. But he's got a lot of spirit. Let's see what he does against Galata. Galata goes fishing downstairs to get it started. That's big Andrew Galata. 39 years old, bouncing around like a 28-year-old. 
And look at this. Bates goes right to his head. Bates can cause this guy to get frustrated. He knows that he's got to stay inside this guy. Jeremy, if he stays out here, he's going to get knocked out. He's got to get in this guy's chest. Right here is where he wants to fight the fight. Exactly. That's what he wants to do. And then he got to stay within the, uh, within his own reach and close the gap on Andrew. Andrew has a high reach advantage, and, of course, he has a big experience uh, 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 advantage in this fight. Well, the kid that works for the Calip uh, Caterpillar team called Walker Machinery, he wanted me to be sure that Dick Walker watching the fight and wants Dick to uh, realize how much he appreciates the opportunity he gives him to fight. So congratulations, Dick, because you got a great kid on your hands here. This is going to be very interesting. I think a lot is trying to get back. Jeremy's uh, the kind of guy that wants an opportunity himself coming off uh, to, to redeem himself for the, the big-time losses that he had with this big-time guy. And you're right, Carl. You know, he's trained eight weeks, trained a hard eight weeks for this fight. And he said, I'm going to just blast this guy. I'm either going to blast it or I'm going to blast him. And Bates is getting in the chest of Andrew. And Andrew, uh, maybe he's bitten off uh, a little uh, bit of a warming. This guy wants to fight. Galata looks awkward. And, you know, Galata, while his body looks great, folks, I've said it many times if you've been with us throughout the course of the evening. Oh, he got rocked that time. Andrew knows he wants to throw the right hand. It is hot here. Jeremy's got to stay here, but he can't take shots like that. He's got to throw, and when he grabs him, he's got to walk him back on his heels. He can't just hold him, because Galata, if he has a hand free, will blast you to the head. Yeah, he's a, a, what you call a, a type of fighter that will just, he fights. No matter where the punches land, no matter how they come, he fights. And while Bates has that kind of doughboy sort of build, he told me that he's been running a couple of miles a day. Big hook to the body by Andrew. Bates hangs in there. Now he walks him back, falls forward. He got clipped pretty good that time. Hey, I thought he was stunned a little bit. He's, you know, he got to stay on the inside. He can't be out there in order to stand up against the Galata like this. He got to get on the inside and smother him. He's trying to do that, and you know, Carl, when he when he does that and smothers him, walks him back, but he's got to hit this guy, too. See, he's in a bad spot here. Now walk him back, walk him back, walk him back. That's right. Now he's doing it right. Let the referee do his job and separate the two after that. Well, one thing for certain, Tony, you can't win if you don't throw any punches. Now he's got a lot of ripping him now with shots and a couple of clean shots there. Galata has a tendency when a guy turns his head to rip him behind the ear, which is a rabbit punch in certain places around the world, namely Australia. You hit a guy with a rabbit punch like that, they will disqualify you. Well, he's a real fighter. I tell you what, he, he throws punches no matter where they land. This guy fights. The bell ends round one. We're going to stay right here. Good action. You wanted to see heavyweights fight? A journeyman in the beast giving the real beast a problem. By the way, this fight is a 10-point must scoring system. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop the fight. Carl. Now we're looking at some highlights from the opening round. As you see, this is where Bates is in this in range here. Now Andrew's letting the hands go. Jeremy Bates needs to stay close, stay out of range, and try to take this fight into the later rounds. Oh, Andrew's man, look at that a shot. Notorious uh, slow start as well. Yeah, he's taking some shots, and I mean shots anywhere they can land. Andrew lets him go. He doesn't match. IBF Vice President Ray Wheatley yeah. watching in Australia. Editor-chief of World of Boxing Magazine, Bruce McTavish and Peter Mugsi over in the Philippines watching tonight. Glad that you have this Fox network around the world. Here we go, round number two. Got to give round one to Galata in the 10-9 fashion that he won that round in. This is scheduled for 10. Let's see if uh, Jeremy Bates can do anything with this guy. He's shorter. He's lighter. He's giving up uh, a lot of reach to this guy, but he's hanging in there. Jeremy's showing a bit of fatigue. And the fatigue is jet lag, and we're all feeling it a bit here. This is a nine-hour time difference from where I live and about a seven hours from where he lives. It's tough to adjust. These fighters have only been here for two days. Galata's been over here for two months. Exactly. That makes a huge difference because that jet lag is nothing to play with as he just got clipped with a left hook, Bates did. Uh, a big left hand that time again. That one rocked, Jeremy. This is going to be tough to recover from that. That's three hard hands, two left hands and a right hand. Jeremy has got to just walk him back. If I sound like I'm rooting for Jeremy, I'm rooting for the guy. He's just a terrific guy. He's got no shot of winning this fight. But you know something? He's in there trying and over my course of calling 10,000 fights and 
833 world title fights. If a guy's got the guts to get in there, you got the colonel support. Again, I get criticized, Carl, sometimes for being a cheerleader for boxing. I don't care. I love it. And so do I. This is a great sport, and you got some great people involved in the sport, some great guys, especially for later. Body There's shot. a low blow. Delano got away with that one. He gets ripped as uh, Jeremy. Jeremy's got to get out of the kill zone. He's lingering in there. He's getting peppered. Got rocked by the right hand. He's ready to go. Big right hand right on top. I don't know what the referee chased him away for. Oh, ripping shot to the body. Bates is in a little bit of trouble here now. Look at his legs. He's fatigued. It's hot here. The big guy pops him. I don't know if he can survive the next minute and 15 seconds of this round. Looked like a little headbutt took place. Oh, boy, look at that. You don't want to touch gloves with Galata. This guy's a street fighter when he gets in there. He's a street fighter when he gets out of there. <laughs> yeah, that he is. Loads up the shot. Bates gets struck. And down he goes. The count is up to two. And three. And four. And five. He's up. Time has been called. Time has been called. I don't know why. I think it's the cut. And he's cut over the eye. And I believe he's calling in for a doctor. He's giving Bates a, a break here, actually, Colonel. It's a big break for Bates, but if the cut is too bad, inside of four rounds, you know, if it's caused by a punch, it's a technical knockout, and that was caused by a punch. This is no accidental hit, but uh, although the heads did come together, he's cracked across the nose. I don't think they'll stop that. I mean, oh, he's cut by the eye, too. Yeah, yeah maybe. I don't know. You know something? It's academic. They almost should stop the fight because all that's going to happen is Jeremy's going to get hurt here. He's going to let it go, I think. Out of time left. Now, that helps out Bates, but Andrew has that uh, look of uh, desire to destroy him. Jeremy tries to hang on. He's out on his feet. You see the time remaining, 33 seconds to go. Galata loads up the shot. Jeremy doing everything. How about the courage of this guy? He's cut. He's hurt. He's gassed. He's out on his feet, and he won't quit. He won't go down. Oh, look at this. The big guy's all over him. Slide down the ropes, Jeremy. It's going to be stopped. All right, it's time to stop the fight now. That's it. It's all over. Good stoppage. Carl, for the second time tonight, I've seen an excellent job by an official of the Polish Boxing Commission. I salute this guy. I salute this country. I salute the Polish Boxing Commission. A great win for Andrew Galata. Tough break for Jeremy Bates. But by golly, I'm so impressed with what this commission is doing. He stopped the fight as I would have. And I've seen a heck of a you sure have, Colonel, and it was stopped at the right time. Galata was landing some big, big bombs, both upstairs and downstairs, and it was just a matter of time, and the, the referee gave him a break with the cut, gave him a little time, but it was just, in fact, a matter of time. And you know, like Richard Steele did so many years ago when he stopped the championship fight, there are only a couple of seconds here. It's not the referee's concern as to how many seconds. He could have let it go a couple of more seconds, but he didn't need to. He did the right thing, a good stoppage. Forget the amount of seconds left. Galata is back in the heavyweight picture. Now, let's be honest. He only beat a journeyman fighter, but so did Evander Holyfield, and Holyfield's got a huge pay-per-view coming up in a couple of weeks uh, down in South Texas. We'll be down there doing that uh, call of that fight, but it doesn't make any difference. This is about the business end. Galata is suddenly back in the heavyweight picture. What he does with it, God only knows, but I want to be around for it. I love to see this guy fight. He's the most successful, like he was tonight, inside of two or three rounds. He certainly is, and you know what? He's the kind of guy that you can never count out. He's big, he's strong, he's, um, he's a punch. He's got all the right tools in, in an otherwise kind of ordinary division now with the championships changing hands. There's no American champions. Andrew Galata will be the closest thing to an, uh, an American champion if he happens to come up with a victory in the championship match. Well, the big thing is that he probably will fight for a title now. They're not going to wait with a guy that's 39 years old. I mean, Don King knows how to promote. I don't need to tell Prince King that. <laughs> you think? I, listen, I think it's, it's almost it's just a matter of time. Andrew Galata's back, and what a great night of boxing we've seen thus far. And action has just only just begun.
fighter, but that's all you have to do in this heavyweight division today because guys like Vladimir Klitschko, Sam Peters, Oleg Muskiev, Nikolai Valuev, Shannon Briggs lost his title, Sergei Lyakovich, Lehman Brewster, I mean James Tony. These are the guys. John Ruiz is even ranked in some uh, rankings still. So Galata is uh, back. Now, I don't know, uh, I'm based on beating Jeremy Bates if you get ranked in the top 20, but it doesn't make any difference. You know why? People say, why doesn't Holyfield quit? Well, Holyfield is still a pay-per-view attraction. It doesn't make any difference. Galata is still a name brand in the boxing and in the heavyweight division. People will want to see him. I know, as I said before this fight, don't go anyplace, because Lord only knows what might happen in this fight. Well, Galata performed tonight. Yes, he did, and he performed quite admirably. I would look at it and see that Andrew Galata right now can contend with, I, what I think, anybody in the heavyweight division. He's already had Ruiz down, who's probably one of the most rugged guys uh, in the division. You just you got to take your hat off to a guy like that at 39 years old. He's coming back, and, and God only knows what the future holds for him. He's most dangerous inside of three or four rounds. Uh, and when you, when you look at the uh, original record of George Foreman, all inside of a few rounds, a couple of rounds, knockouts. When you look at the big guys like Sonny Liston in their career, all inside of the uh, two, three rounds. Even look at the uh, uh, Klitschko's in the early parts of their career, all early round knockouts. That's what big guys with big punches do. And all he can do, as we take a look at it again, here we are, the second round, this is the end. This is a stoppage coming. This is after they stop to look at the cuts. Uh, Andrew Galata, I tell you, you know, when you look at Andrew in this one, he looks strong, he's leaning on, he does everything that he possibly can to win the fight no matter what. And that's what you gotta love about a guy like that. All right, obviously, I thought it was the first few seconds. We've got a real sound problem here. It's so loud in the arena, I'm having difficulty hearing my director, Frank Belmont. Now Frank has been able to tell me, and I obviously I can see the, the uh, time piece down the lower right hand that we're seeing this whole second round, not the uh, last few seconds. But notice Bates trying to do the best he can. But watch, folks, the amount of heavy head blows. He just took a real strong, heavy right hand there. And you begin to see when a guy starts falling down and going down to the canvas, his legs are getting weak. And again, jet lag and 100% humidity and over 100 degrees in here. It's brutal. Absolutely, Colonel. And, and Jeremy tried to hang in here. I thought he did the right thing because, as you mentioned, Andrew has been has some great early knockout victories in his career, but yet in some of his big fights, he has been stopped early in, his, in the early rounds as well with relentless Lehman, Brewster, Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson's fight, however, was a no contest. That also ended after one round. So, yeah, he's been, it's, Jeremy did, I think, came out to do what I would think anyone would do in order to beat Andrew. Well, look at that shot. Again, he really hitting clean shots. And at this stage now, this is uh, only a minute and 20 seconds from the end of the fight. Bates has taken heavy head blows. Good jab. Throwing caution to the wind. See, the problem is Galat is so big that Bates, while he wants to get him back and walk him back on his heels, he can't. See, Tyson was a smaller man than Francois Boda, so Boda could walk him back, and Mike couldn't do much about it. But Galata digs in. Now, see, he's awkward with his punches, but look at the power. And down goes Jeremy Bates for the first time in this fight. And at this stage, he's cut across the bridge of the nose, and he's cut by the eye. He's up by five. But you see the cut clearly there? Yeah, he's breathing hard. And now the referee calls time. And this, at this stage, is a big effect, a positive effect for Bates. But it was academic because Galata had hit him with just too many head blows. And you see when time is back in that Galata continues to hit him with head blows. And at that stage, I was calling for the referee to stop the fight. I said if he doesn't, get his hands up and start throwing the wheel in the fight. Well, then you know what? The, to the credit of the Polish Boxing Commission, they did a great job tonight so far. And I think the referee did the right thing. Uh, Jeremy did give it his all, but that is a brutal flight across that ocean. And that jet lag is something to contend with, along with this ungodly heat that we're feeling here at this, uh, this Fort Arena. This is worse than the night in Zaire. I was in both places. This is worse here. Oh, this is absolutely. the worst heat I've felt in a fight since Barry McGuigan lost in the desert outdoors in Las Vegas. This is brutal. But Galata has to put up with it, too. At this stage, Jeremy's showing great courage, great heart. He will not go down. 
He wants to hang in there, but he gets hit again. And enough one, another one cracks across his nose. Now a series of blows where he's not answering. You gotta throw or he's gonna stop the fight. This is what happened when Ronaldo Snipes got hit by Larry Holmes. He didn't take the knee and the fight was stopped and so was this one. Yeah, exactly, that's what happens. If, if you gotta throw punches back if, in order for the guy to go. Or on take the, the knee. The problem with fighters taking the knee is it's not the nature of a fighter to want to do something that defensively and definitively. You've already lost the round, most likely 10-8. He had because he'd been down. He should have taken the knee if he wanted to continue. Plenty of, plenty of courage, plenty of grit. Wow. Adam and Pineda coming up next. Stick with us around.